Do you have a spare computer at home that you want to set up as a home server for your home lab? Well, stick around. I'm going to show you how you can get started. Hey, what is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Havoc. In this one, I'm going to show you how you can take a spare computer you have at home and install Proxmox on it to get started on your home lab journey. I have a computer I built up that I want to make into a home server, and we're going to go through the process now together on how we can get going on this. The first thing we want to do is we need to download Proxmox. So you can Google it, just Google Proxmox downloads, or I'll put a link in the description below of where you can download it. And for this instance, we're going to download the latest version they have, which is Proxmox VE 8.2. It is an ISO file. What you'll need to do is download it and put it on some sort of installation media. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use my Ventoy drive. If you don't know what Ventoy is or you need help setting it up, I'll put a link in the description below or somewhere up here of where you can see the video where I walk you through how to set up Ventoy. So now go ahead and download the Proxmox installation and put it on your install media. Now that you have it on your installation media, we need to go ahead and plug that into your computer and boot it up. For computers that already have an operating system on them, you might have to go into the BIOS and set the boot order. And you'll want to set the first priority boot order to the disk that we just put the Proxmox ISO on. For my example, I have to press delete to go in the BIOS or I can press F12 and it'll let me select the boot order. Go ahead and plug your drive into your computer and choose that drive to boot up to. We can see my computer now is booting. I'm pressing F12 to get into our boot menu. And for me, I need to choose the 500 gig drive that I have the Proxmox ISO on. So I'm going to choose the second one down here and the system will reboot and go into that. And you can see now we're into Ventoy. I have two ISO images in my Ventoy drive. I have a Proxmox and a Windows 11. If you want to install Windows 11 without the Microsoft account requirement, I have a video going over that and I'll put it in the description below. We'll choose our Proxmox ISO. We want to boot into normal mode. And then here, we have install Proxmox VE graphical. That's what I'm going to choose. It's going to start running through here and get us into the graphical user interface so we can get Proxmox installed with all the settings we want. So here we have the end user license agreement. Go ahead and accept that. And now we need to choose the drive to install Proxmox to. As with any operating system installation, it's going to clear out, wipe everything off the disk you're installing to. So make sure you have everything backed up if you have anything on that drive. Go ahead and choose the disk you wanna install Proxmox to. Just make sure you don't choose the Ventoy disk. I've accidentally done that before where I tried to install Proxmox to the disk that has Ventoy on it. It didn't work out so well. Then we'll click next. And here at the bottom is where we type in your country, your time zone, and your keyboard layout. So go ahead and do that. This screen is very important. This is where we're going to enter in our admin password or our root password and then our email. The email is used to send you any updates or issues with the server. You don't have to put something there. I suggest you do, that way you know if there's any failures, et cetera, with your Proxmox server. So go ahead and enter that stuff here and click next. On this screen, we're gonna set up the networking and the name of our server. Under management interface, this is where you're gonna choose your network card. I have two network cards showing up here. I have the built-in gigabit NIC on the motherboard and then I have an external one I've plugged in that's 2.5 gig. I'm gonna pick my 2.5 gig, and then whatever you're going to name the server, you'll wanna do a fully qualified domain name. Usually you can just do something like server name dot local. That's usually what people do. However, if you have a domain name you use internally for your network, you can use that here. And then the last portion is to set up the IP address. Your server probably already got an IP address via DHCP from your router. If you don't want to use that, you can manually type in an address here. So go ahead and type all that in and hit next. If everything looks right on this screen, we're ready to go. If not, you can click the previous button down below and change any of the information you want. And then at the bottom in the middle, you see automatically reboot after successful installation. You can keep that checked or uncheck it. It just says after the installation happens, it'll automatically reboot the system. Let's click install. And now the Proxmox install starts to happen. We'll come back when we get to our login screen. 
After the Proxmox installation is finished, go ahead and remove that Ventoy or your boot media drive from the computer and your computer will reboot into your new Proxmox installation. So I have the boot media removed and we're now going to restart the computer. You can see it comes to here. We're gonna boot directly into Proxmox VE and here we are. Here's the login screen for Proxmox. Now there are a couple options available to you. First up, if you have a monitor and keyboard attached to your server, you can log in here and do everything via the command line. The next option is on a different computer, you can use a terminal software and log in to your server and do everything command line. And the third option, which I highly advise is on your computer, go to the web address that you assigned to your server. Go ahead and open up a web browser and type in the IP address followed by colon 8006, because that's the port that Proxmox installed to. And when you go to the server for the first time, it's gonna give you a connection is not private. And that is because we don't have a certificate set up for the server and that's okay. So we'll click advanced and then proceed. And here we are, we are at the login screen to our new Proxmox server. The default username is root. And remember when we went through the installation process, we set up that password for our root account. Go ahead and enter that here and click login. And here we are, we are now logged into our brand new Proxmox server. I know you're gonna go through and start having a lot of fun with these settings and setting up your new applications. And there you have it, that's your brand new Proxmox server. We now have a tech section set up on the Discord server. If you wanna be part of the community, head over to discord.gg slash havoc and make sure you choose the tech option. Looking forward to seeing you there. Until next time, Stay safe, have fun, and keep doing good.